So imagine if you could search for something on Netflix and give it all kinds of parameters to find exactly the show you're looking for. Like, hey, I'm looking for a Danish crime drama, but it needs to be atmospheric, artsy, and fairly pretentious. Then Netflix would go, okay, cool. Any other requirements? Yeah, I'd really like one of the characters to only squeal like a pig. After a lifetime of servitude and on the verge of a new beginning, Mew traverses the ominous landscape of Copenhagen's criminal netherworld, searching for justice and enacting vengeance on an odyssey through the natural and the supernatural. So Copenhagen Cowboy is a new Netflix series from writer and director Nicholas Winning Refn. Now, he's the guy that brought us movies like Drive, Only God Forgives, and The Neon Demon. Now, for this outing, he's gone full art mode with a massive helping of pretentious and almost self-indulgent storytelling. The series is six episodes, and they are gorgeous to look at. All the framings are carefully crafted to really draw our focus to whatever is central in the screen. He also washes just about everything in a blue, red, purple, or pink neon glow. And this adds a slight seediness to the production, even though the environments aren't always seedy or nasty. Revan also utilizes a few camera techniques consistently throughout the season, which is nice from a style choice, but it can also get a bit tedious and almost discombobulating. Almost all of the camera movements are slow and deliberate, pushing in on a subject with just extreme patience, or sometimes pulling out away from them. There's also a huge amount of panning that the camera does in a 360 degree turn, sometimes circling multiple times, which I know is more than 360 degrees. But think of the basement scenes in that 70s show where we get to witness everything that's happening inside an area, but in here, it takes a while to get there. Sometimes the camera is also tracking as a subject walks around a location, and other times the camera just takes in all of the characters as they're scattered about a room. There were even a couple of times when the camera spun around about three times, maybe a little bit more. I was actually beginning to get a bit dizzy, even though the turn was very steady in its pace, and it wasn't very quick. There are also times that Refn uses a long dolly shot to track the characters walking through an area. All of these shot choices, they create long, continuous takes that are enveloping and sometimes even hypnotic. Now, the musical score is so great, utilizing a ton of synth, and that creates a driving pulse and rhythm to the scenes. It's also combined with some of the slow push or pull of the camera, and at times it felt very much like a scene out of Kubrick's The Shining. Now, this effectively built a sense of malevolence and unease, even though nothing but a disturbed expression was on a character's face. There's very little dialogue throughout this show, even though when there are words being spoken, they don't always help the story's understanding. The dialogue is cryptic sometimes, or it's stunted, so we as the audience have to piece together all that's being inferred through the combo of words and actions. Now, there's also not a clearly defined story, at least at the outset. For the first couple of episodes, I really wasn't sure what was going on or at least what the point was. I mean, we meet Mew, this petite young woman who's being transported to this random house where then all of these women touch her and fawn over her like she's some sort of lucky rabbit's foot. Now, slowly we learn the types of people that are surrounding Mew, but still, it's very vague as to how she got there and where the story's headed. I think by the third episode, I was starting to click with the story. There were still huge areas that weren't making much sense, but Mew was growing on me. And the whole presentation, story included, it makes this a very difficult series to connect with. Now, over time, Mew becomes the true protagonist, and just about everybody else that she comes into contact with are antagonists. I mean, there are a few here and there that aren't opposing Mew, but the majority, they're just not good people. In addition to Mew's journey, if we can call it that, uh, there's another story focus on this blonde-haired dude who's very, very strange. Now, at one point, he screams, and it sounds just like a pig squealing. Why? Yeah, who knows? I mean, there's no rhyme or reason for this. It's just like, why are pigs a central visual focus for the show? Now, one obvious reason is because they behave just like Brip Top said they do. They will go through bone like butter. You, oh, that is a terrible accent. You, you need at least 16 pigs to finish the job in one setting. So be very wary of any man who keeps a pig farm. They will go through a body that weighs 200 pounds in about eight minutes. That means a single pig can consume two pounds of uncooked flesh every minute. Hence the expression, as greedy as a pig. I apologize to all my British friends for that. That was terrible. Okay, but back to the blonde dude. His family's strange, and the dad has a huge obsession with a particular piece of his body. 
And then I struggle to figure out what the role has in the overall narrative. I mean, there is a point where Mew and this dude clash, but there's more to the story that could change the genre, bringing in story elements that then take this more into a supernatural area, but it's never explicitly stated, so it is hard to be certain. The storylines do all converge, or they at least connect, so there is some cohesiveness to why we meet all of these different characters. But the story, it doesn't typically give us a reason to care about anybody within the narrative. I mean, even Mew, while sympathetic, is still mostly an enigmatic stranger to us all the way through it. Now, each episode is about 50-ish minutes, but they feel much longer than that. Most of this comes from the extreme lack of dialogue and then the long staring contest the camera has with the characters. There are artsy segments where a character will be alone in a black room, only lit by neon as they either stare at the camera or do some odd dance sequence. Now, during these moments, and because they happen so frequently, this becomes way more style over substance. Now, I think if you're a diehard Nicholas winning Refn fan, this then can be something that you latch onto and really get into. The presentation is beautiful and stunning, but it's also incredibly slow, and for a lot of the story, it feels pointless. The acting is stoic and almost emotionless, with only rare outbursts or displays of feeling. And there's this huge air of this art for art's sake. Just taking a very thin story, creating atmospheric settings, and stretching them across several hours when it could be told in less than half that amount of time. Now, considering how Netflix just canceled 1899 and how that was way more accessible show than this is, I have a hard time believing that this is going to be renewed for a second season. And that's actually a shame because the story isn't nearly concluded. We followed Mew on her trek, but now a new antagonist has arrived who appears threatening and possibly powerful. So only time is going to tell. There's sex, nudity, profanity, and violence, including sexual assault. I give Copenhagen Cowboy two out of five couches. So do you like Refn's work? What's your favorite of his? Now, I really like Drive, but Bronson was also weirdly captivating. Let me know yours, though, in the comments below. If you enjoyed this review, please give it a like. Also, don't forget to share and subscribe. I'm Chris. This is Movies and Munchies. Thanks for couching with me.